Previously on The Garage Engineer, we choose one of our four antique motors to revive. The Western Auto Motor was picked as our first candidate. We pulled the cover off. We learned new ways to remove a screw to remove the gas tank. We refreshed and regapped the ignition system. Check the carb gaskets and removed rust from inside of our gas tank. Then we finished off the video by firing up the motor to see if it had enough compression. So as you saw in the recap, we did check the uh, spark and then we also got this at the end of the video to fire it off by putting a little bit of fuel down in the cylinder. So now I think the next step is we're gonna try to get the tank back on. Uh, we're gonna do a wash it out just a little bit. And also, we're going to uh, first work on these fuel lines because they're hard as a rock, so we'll get that changed out. And before we take off the old lines, I do want to check to make sure this fuel shutoff valve works. So I'm going to disconnect this line here. Ow. Oop. Well, that sucks. That just broke. That is not good. One of the ports off the fuel line just broke. Well, let's get that off. Let's first check to make, see what's going on with this. I'm going to blow some air in here. Nothing. All right, so we got a clog going through here. So let me get some of this apart, and then we'll uh, check out what I broke. The port where the main gas tank goes is what broke, so... Let's get this off and see what's going on. So we uh, took off the fuel line splitter here. Let's take the shutoff valve down here and we can take it all out and be easier to work on it outside the motor. It's not too bad. It's a little dirty. But not nothing unusual. Well, I can't get this part off. So let's get the hoses off and then we'll stick a wire down in there. Maybe we can see if we can clean it that way. We got these fuel line removers or a hose remover I guess and work pretty good just wrap it around and you can kind of wiggle it try not to break anything well, you know what we'll probably just cut the hose it's not coming off so let's just cut it just do a little slit down the middle here surgery There you go. I mean, these hoses are petrified. They're hard as a rock, so I mean, they they definitely needed to be changed out. Perfect. We'll see if we can get some air in here. Blow it out. Just blowing air through one side to see if it's coming out the bottom and up the top here, and I think I'm getting a good flow. Let's see, coming from the bottom here. Here's the cutoff valve, and I think that's a little o ring right up here. Let's see what we got in our stock. Maybe we can replace it uh, just to be a little bit more pliable because it's hard as a rock, also. Let's see what we got. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to cut a section of this out to reduce the diameter. 
like that. And if we squeeze it together, and that should be the same diameter as our original one there. It's kind of hard to see. But now we need to glue it together. Then blow on it. The CO2 from your breath is kind of act as an activator. There you go. We'll let that sit just for a little bit. That looks pretty close. We'll let that dry and we'll come back and check it. Okay, that's been about uh, about two minutes or so. Now here is our new. This is one we cut, made, and this is the old one. They're pretty close. So as long as we can get this around the top without breaking the uh, CA glue, we should be in business. There you go. So that's pliable. And it's on there pretty good. So now we just need well, the final test to see if it leaks. So that's how you make an O-ring when you don't have the right size. Now going back to our supply line issue, this is what broke off. Well, it didn't really break off, it just came, uh, came out of the uh, port. But I don't know how it was, if it was just friction fit in there. I don't see any glue marks. So what I can do is I'll just squeeze it on. And we'll see if that is enough. You can always take it off, I guess, and epoxy it or some type or JB weld it or something, but I don't see any glue on the other one. We'll just squeeze it back on. But it didn't break, thank goodness. It just came out of its joint. We'll tap that. Let's tap that in a little bit. It's in there pretty tight, so we'll we'll go with that. So that fixed that, thank goodness. We'll clean up the rust a little bit and then we'll let's do all the new supply lines. So I'm glad we took this off because uh, after I was wanted to check to make sure the passages were clear, I blew through the bottom one, which was the auxiliary tank, and it's it's uh, clear. But I blew through the top one, the one we just fixed, and it's completely clogged. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of wire. Let's see, I got a wire here and stick it down in there. There you go. Uh, did you see that? That fell out? That's a piece of varnish gas, I guess, that was in there and completely blocking it. So uh, I'm going, yeah, because it's got some stickiness. I'm going to get some brake clean and we'll spray it out. Uh, so I'm glad, kind of glad it worked out that it was, it was clogged. That would have been a problem. So we had the deal intake back together, cleaned out. I hope tight enough that it won't leak. Oop, and we just lost everything. Let's see here. We've got our dual intake for the carb here. We're gonna screw it back on. There's not much room in here to film and to get my fingers in. It's kind of tight. Let's get it started here at least, and then you can see. I think I need to magnetize my screwdriver. Keep no uh -oh, dropping it. So we'll get that screwed back in. And we'll be able to measure our fuel lines. We can take our cutout valve that we put the new O-ring on and stick it up inside. And You'll have to put it to the test when we hook the tank up to it. That should do it. Let's see if we get some air going through there. That's just the air leaking on the, around it. I don't have a rubber grommet to go on the outside of my nozzle there. So now we'll undo it and we'll see if air will go through. Yep, it's going through. So the big thing is to see if that O-ring 
will do its job and it won't leak when it's closed. So we'll keep that closed for now. The only way to test it is with some gas. So we got our one side connected to our uh, dual import on the carb and then now we're going to the accessory tank here. Push that on and then we use our spring clamps to tighten everything on to the, the bibs there. Let me get a screwdriver. So I'm going to go ahead and add my spring clamp on here. Stick that on. We'll just make sure these spring clamps don't collide with each other. You don't want it to collide with the, the uh, choke either. The choke goes right up above it. There you go. That'll work. Let me just measure what we need here. We're just going to reuse one of the old tube clamps that was on the original just for to recycle. There's no need to put brand new on. We want to make this functional, not perfect. Plus, we don't have less waste. Well, maybe not. This might be too short. This one's too short for some reason. Let's see. Yeah, for some reason our uh, hose is thicker than the previous one, and they cut off the end, so I can't reuse it. Plus, it's going on the inside. Oh, that's weird. So we won't reuse this one. Right, let's reuse the other one. It's a little longer. Guess the big thing on this is make sure your screw is facing out. Make it easier to access when you're trying to screw it in. Just kind of think about that before you start hooking things up. I'm gonna widen this one can get go wider. Should slide over. Yep. Perfect. So for the one that goes from the cutoff valve to the tank, I don't know the length yet because we need to set the tank on so we kind of have a good distance. So let's go finish cleaning uh, just a little bit of rust that I saw on the bottom of it out, wash it out, and then we can uh, do our measurements from there. Now that we got the tank sufficiently clean, there's a little bit of just rusty fuel left over from before, so we got that out. Uh, now we've got it back on the motor, and we're going to measure uh, the last fuel line uh, to connect the cutoff valve to the tank itself. Okay, I think we're at a point now we'll get the tank connected and we will maybe, uh, let's do a test run. Uh, but wait, let's check the lower end unit just to see kind of where we're at uh, with that, uh, if it has grease, oil, whatnot. So let's check that after we put the tank on. So we'll put a block of wood right here just to kind of hold it so it doesn't fault come slam down. Let's take a look at this lower end here. Alright, so this does have oil in it. It has a fuel fill up top here and I guess the drain is on the back. So you always want to make sure you can open both of them. Don't drain it out yet. Let's make sure we can uh, open the fill first, which I think won't be a problem. And the drain is on the other side. So let's make sure we can crack everything open first.
I'm going to turn you around, so I'm on the back side, but that, this actually says vent, so I don't know, so it, it's loose, um, it was a little tight, so what I did is I just took a screwdriver, and this has a square shaft, so I could use a 5 sixteenths um, wrench, and then turn it, and give it a little bit, so I can put pressure on it while I'm turning it, and I got it loose, but uh, I don't know where the drain is, unless you have to take the bottom end out to drain it. Uh, let's just see what we got in there. I'm assuming he filled up the top here and it fills up the bottom and then when it comes out it vents uh, to the top here. So I'm going to lower it back down. Let's see if the oil comes up to the vent line. So here we are on that same vent side right here. So I'm going to uh, open it up and see if there's anything in there. Uh, that's too small to see anything. That really is just a vent to open up, and I guess you just keep pouring it in there until you see it coming out of the vent. Because here on this side is the fuel, and I don't see a, a drain. So, see how big this one is. It's not that big either. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to have to get some contraption. We'll get some lower end oil in there. But I've got to get a straw or something that I can uh, actually put in there. And we'll just go ahead and fill it up. I guess while we're in here, let's take a look at this. Uh, let's take the prop off and just kind of look at it, see what's behind there. So we'll take the cotter pin off first. See, the shear pin's completely missing here. So we've got one for our oven rood that will stick in there. Um, that seal doesn't look too bad, unless it's empty. Let's, uh, let's get that shear pin put in, and then we will, uh, let's fill this, uh, the lower end up with some oil. We've got our shear pin, so we'll attach that through here. Let's turn it sideways so it won't fall out. I'm just rotating the shaft here up top so we can turn it sideways and then it won't fall out. There you go. We just attach our prop in the same fashion. And there's little marks right here on the prop kind of to tell you how to line up your... Let's see if you can see that. See these little notches on both sides that's showing you where the shear pin like the uh, cavity for the shear pin is to line it up so we're going to get the nut back on here I like to do it hand tight and then back it off just a little bit so that's hand tight just turn it and then we'll find the next available spot where the uh, same place where the shear pin the the markers were for the shear pin that's also where the uh, the cotter pin lines up also. There you go. That should be good there. We'll build it over. Perfect. I've got this cheap adapter that came with a uh, compressor set. I don't really, I've never used it. It screws on. But the good thing, it has a quarter inch fitting. So I got some quarter inch tubing. And we're going to attach that here. And then the other end of it will go to our uh, lower end gear lube bottle. So we've got the fill on this side. So we'll take that screw out. And then we got the vent on this side. So when it starts coming out the vent here, that means we've got enough. Usually you do it the other way. You fill it from the drain up, but I don't think this has a drain. So we'll just try it. We'll see how much is in there. It's pretty thick. Yeah, 
It's going. It's going in. I hear it. There you go. You see it dripping right here? It's dripping out the vent right here, so I think we're good. So we'll just button this up, and I think we'll be ready to put some gas in it. All right, we got the water coming up. It's right there at the level that we probably need it. We're gonna get some fuel in here. And then also, this is where the exit port of the exhaust um, water is gonna pump up. It does have, it does have a water impeller, so we'll have to uh, keep that in mind. If it's not pumping, we'll check it out. See if we need to replace that or not. So what we have here is non-ethanol fuel mixed with a TCW uh, marine two cycle oil 24 to 1 mixture ratio I won't fill it all the way up because we're going to be checking for leaks because remember that carb um, the carb drain we weren't sure how that was going to work with the o-ring that we put in there and Let's see how the cutoff valve is working. It should be enough to get started here. So let's turn on the cutoff valve and see if we've got any leaking. Yeah, but we've already, I haven't even opened the cutoff valve. So there you can see the carb drain is leaking. We knew that was going to be a possible issue. So we'll, let me see if we can readjust it. Maybe we can get it to shut off just for now so we can see if we, no, it's, it's really off. Well, we know there's fuel getting to the uh, carb, but the other problem is the shutoff is completely closed, so that's not working. All right, so we're back in the shop. I couldn't find a flat washer that would work for the uh, uh, the relief valve on the carburetor. So I have some gasket material. This is kind of a rubber butyl uh, gasket. I need to get a punch set so I can get better circles, but since I don't have it, I use... Uh, socket sets to get my measurements and to make the circles and uh, then I'm going to use a knife to cut the outside of it but for the inside I do have a leather hole punch which I could probably that will fit the right size of the pin um, and then we can get it fit a little tighter uh, that's more important really than the outside so let's get let's get to cutting so when I cut circles I like to cut them at, at tangents of the circle itself and just keep going around that's the best way rather than trying to cut it circular like that I just cut little sections off kinda like the uh, aperture of a camera cut it a little bit smaller than what we need There you go. That's pretty clear. It's circular. Uh, I'll go around and clean it up and then we'll make sure it fits. There's an indentation down at the bottom there so you can kind of see what the outside of the washer should be. And then the inside will be the diameter of our pin right here. So I'll just cut it to fit. So now that we got our circle trimmed up, we're going to find the size that we need in here. So I'm just sticking the end and figuring out which one's the tightest. Actually, it could be smaller, huh? Let's try the smallest setting first and see how that fits. All right, let's see if it cut all the way through. There you go. It's a tiny hole. Let's see here. How big does it need to be? Probably needs to be a little bigger, so let's go up the next step. There you go. So I'll definitely be looking. I'm going to add to my list, like we talked about, what tools we need to buy. Um, we're going to add it to our list so I can keep track of how many times I'll need it. This is probably the second time I've needed it. 
but I, I need to add it all. I haven't added it to the list yet. So there you go. We'll put that on. So here's our pen. Let's take the old O-ring off. Let me just stick the washer right down on there. So let's see if that is what we need to do. And see if we leak here. So far nothing. I'm going to open the vent. I think we should be good there. Shouldn't be a problem. There you go. That fixed that. So that's how you make your homemade gasket. So again, we'll just put on our wish list for a uh, hole punch set. Alright, the car was stopped leaking at the drain uh, plug. Uh, we've got the choke open. Turned up all the way there. Let's give it a crank. So she starts up, that's a good thing. I did not see anything coming out of the exhaust um, holes there. So I'm going to blow some air up in there. Sometimes that helps clear it out. Um, I, my guessing is the impeller is gone or it's too hard. Uh, but let us let me try to blow some air up in there and then we'll try again. Alright, so there's bubbles coming out the... Uh, prop side of it so it, it's probably it might be the impeller sometimes you just got to give it a few minutes before the water starts uh, peeing out but let's give it a try and let it run a little bit longer I'm not going to run it too long if the impeller is not working but you can see the exhaust ports are peeing out a little bit, so that's a good sign. We just need to work on uh, getting this to idle better, so that's what we're, we're going to work on next. I still don't see anything, um, and I think it needs to be adjusted. The carb needs to be adjusted too. The uh, I was trying to close the uh, choke, and that just killed it all. So we got the motor running, but. It's still surging, and I think that's due to the carb. Something it's not delivering a steady stream of fuel because even if you adjust the fuel mixture screw, you're not getting uh, any significant change one way or the other, and it's real spotty. So even though the carb was clean that we saw, we need to take it off and clean it. So when we were running the motor, it was running all right, but it was kind of surging a little bit. So I think we really need to get into the carb to uh, clean it to see what's going on with that. And I think one of the, uh, it's got an air leak in one of the uh, fuel line intakes uh, gaskets. So we're probably just going to get into it. But the problem is, is we've got to take off the dual, dual fuel line intake to get the nut off, which is a big pain. But... Uh, let's work on getting that carb off and we'll see what's dirty or why it's not getting a good fuel. Alright, so basically to get the carb off you had to unscrew this nut as far as you could until it hit here. And then you take the other side off and completely take the nut, nut off. And then you can wiggle it up and that will give you more room to uh, keep continue to unscrew it and then it will uh, come off. So now we're at the point of just trying to wiggle this thing out here. There you go. All right, let's get, we'll get this on the bench and take a look at it. So here's the issue, here's the dual import for the fuel line there. I think we were getting a leak uh, where it was cracked up on the gasket up there. And then on the back side, I don't know if I took it off, when I took it off it ripped, or it could have had a leak right here. So these gaskets really needed to be changed. Um, and we've got a uh, rebuild kit coming, so that will probably help a little bit with the air leakage and the fuel mixture. And uh, I'll get this apart, and we will take a look at the inside. Next, let's get the bowl off here. We'll get a half inch.
and this was uh, one and a half turns when I got it so let's see if we can get it out all the way we can clean it and then there's the hole that we gotta make sure is clean which I think flashlight now that's clean I don't know if you can see up in there it's clean so that wasn't the problem we were having earlier and this is the probably the delivery system for the uh, it, for the uh, idle adjustment screw so let's get this off here and get some pliers There's a little spring on the end of that. It's an interesting way to hold it. This looks like it's been re replaced. I wonder, that's how they used to hold it. They would use a, a spring on the top instead of the way they make it now. They, well, they, I guess they use a spring too, but uh, that probably fell off. That's probably why it was leaking before. So before we put this in the uh, carb cleaner, we're going to spray a little bit. Yep, that's a broken one. Brake clean here. Down into the seat. We'll take our Q-tip on our drill. And we'll... This is the uh, carb rebuild kit. I'll have a link in the video description of the one that we're using. The only thing this kit doesn't have is the uh, um, bowl gasket, which broke, but I'll show you how we can make our own. And this does come with the gasket that goes from the carb to the body of the motor, but I'm going to show you a different way how we can uh, make our own, uh, the way I like to do it when I don't have a kit or if I just need that one gasket but we needed the whole entire thing we got all kinds of goodies so this is a little valve that goes in the dual fuel intake and it is a little bit smaller than the original but it'll work here's the gasket that goes with it and then here is the wire mesh I think we pretty much got I'm going to reuse the other uh, needle because this needle is the other one's a lot better than this one so and here's some more gaskets and here's that plug that, that we like we have there and here's the freeze plug which we haven't done so let's get set up and we'll install it so to insert the filter, the first thing I like to do is get a uh, drill bit, use the back of it. This is actually, uh, I don't know what it is, uh, 9 30 seconds. And that just helps kind of push it in evenly. So we'll stick that back in. Kind of push it down. You probably could use it a little bigger, but that will work for what we need to do. Put the gasket on. And this is, there's two different notches and they're different sizes, so there's only one way to put this on, which is kind of nice. And this one's a little tight. It's not fitting like it should. Just push it on there good and tight. Here's that valve, kind of like a reed valve for the fuel. And then something I learned today that this is actually a fuel pump 
which uses the, uh, I guess, the uh, crankcase gas, and this needs to be at a 45 degree angle, like that, from the, the horizontal line, it needs to be 45 degrees, so that's kind of interesting how that works. So I'll use the pressure from the fuel uh, crankcase. We'll leave that like that. So really we can't install we we can't install this until we get it on which is always a pain but we can't install it until we get the uh carb on so we'll leave that off and we don't need the freeze plug we'll switch this gasket out it's for the bottom there and it's the exact same size so that'll work the needle and the spring we'll keep for spare parts We made our own um, gasket in an earlier video, so we're going to keep that. That's for that drain valve, so that's important. So let's put the float back on. Yeah, I don't like this design of the float or the needle spring. From a refrigeration pack, I think, that I got somewhere just because it was a bigger size. So we'll split the ring. Try to get a nice square cut. Perfect. We'll wrap it around to measure. We'll get it just a little bit tight so it's snug on there. And get our cutter. And you want that square also. Alright. Then we take our CA glue, put a little bit of glue on the end there. And we hold it. Together. Now blow on it. The CO2 from your breath helps accelerate it a little bit. After the CA glue dries, it should be good to go. And then we just need to reinstall it onto our carb. There we go. Now there's a little indention here that we want to make sure it sits above the pin. We'll get the gasket and the fuel mixture screw here. Oh, that's not it. Missing the nut. It's a fuel screw mixture screw goes all the way up and then bring it back one and a half times it's half one and a half there you go and get that screwed back on get that tightened up here and we should be good to go well after f forgetting the nut Looking for it. I forgot to put the gasket on, so now we gotta go back, take this off, and we'll put the gasket on. Or the washer. Then you put the put it on, and then we'll be together. Perfect. Now it's ready to, to install. So the tool I was gonna use to show you how to uh the punches to make uh the own get my own gaskets hasn't come in yet so uh, we're gonna go ahead and just use what came with the uh, the kit itself just to move things along alright so let's get this uh, let's make sure our needle is set should be all the way in and then turn it out one whole turn and okay one whole turn 
So I'm just adjusting here. This is the idle needle right there. Inside there, there's a little mark on it. So we're going to turn it. One whole turn out. And then the set screw should be at the bottom here. So with the idle screw turned one turn out, then you want the set screw to be at the six o'clock position, so the down position right here. And that should give you enough turn when you're checking the, uh, making it lean or rich when you're for the idle. So there you go. That's where it needs to be set, so that should be good. One thing to note when you're putting on the gasket, you need to make sure that hole is, because that's the uh, crankcase, uh, the um, pressure is going to be sent in for the crankcase to uh, move the uh, fuel pump, which basically the fuel pump is that rubber piece that we talked about earlier here, and you got to make sure that's in the carb that's set right up here, and this has got to be at the 45 degree mark is how they want it like that see that line oh see that line right there it's got to be at the 45 degrees like that so let's get that on let's see if we can get this thing in here it's kind of hard you just got to kind of wiggle it around and we get it on the studs there so we'll just get the nut on now we're not going to put this all the way tight we're just going to get it on so it's sitting on the screw you can see my it's tight kind of in here. I don't know if you'll be able to see. We just get the, the nut on the stud there just a little bit because we're gonna have to pull it out to get it around here. Let's see. There you go. Once you get it on, so then you just get the your wrench on it and then just tighten the nuts down. So I'll work on that and then we'll bring you back to the next step here. Now that we've got the carb attached, we're going to attach the fuel inlet. You got the gasket. And these are notched. And they're two different notches, so there's only one way to do it. And this one was kind of tight. This generic uh, one that I got kit wasn't the best. But I think everything lines up pretty good. All right, and then you've got this other piece here and that fits just on top like that. That kind of meters, they're little flaps that meter the fuel. So here's our dual fuel in inlet. We've got to hold it on there, get the screws on there without everything falling apart. kind of hard. Don't have much space. There you go. If we can get at least one on, we should be good to go. So I'm going to use my magnet here, my pickup magnet, and we're going to stick it down in there. And then hopefully we'll be able to get, get it at least started enough so I can pull the magnet away. Or just knock it off. There you go. Well, it knocked off. But the screw is still in there. And then we should be able to get it going. All right. We just got to hook the hose lines back up. Get the auxiliary tank hooked up first. That's the bottom one. And then the top one is the, from the tank, the onboard tank. And you got to make sure this one doesn't uh, get interfere with the choke because it's tight. I think that puts everything back together. Let's see if we can get this going. So the last time when we ran this, the motor ran, but it, it was kind of in and out. I think it had a fuel issue. And I went into it and I was adjusted the uh, float with the needle and made it a little bit more level. Uh, so now we're going to give it a try and uh, see if we can get this uh, tuned up.
Well, definitely, uh, the motor's running a lot better than it was before. It was definitely the uh, needle and the float needed to be adjusted so that it uh, worked properly in unison. So now uh, I think we're, we've got a good running motor. Let's uh, get her into paint. I did want to show you the reason we were leaking before is one, the float needle was uh, open and it was flooding the whole carb, but the, also it was leaking here. There's a, a wa rubber washer uh, that goes right above the spring there and that needed to be replaced. So we replaced that and now uh, we are, uh, fuel is tight and not leaking anymore. So we've got a lot accomplished in this week's video of reviving the Western Auto boat motor. But however, I've, we've got some more things that I wanted to get done and I hate, hated to cram it all into one big long video. So what I've decided to do is to split the video this week here and then next week we are going to get into the good stuff about repairing a cowl, paint of everything, and assembly and then retesting. Watch out for the next video and we'll do all those items. And as a maker, remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.